Now what about the electrons? So electrons we find exist in specific energy levels around the nucleus and that's called an electron shell. There's a maximum number of electrons that can fit within each shell. The formula we use is 2n squared, you'll need to remember that one. n is our shell number. So here we're looking at k, l, m and n shell. So they are numbered 1 through to 4 and we can work out the maximum number of electrons that can fit in that. So when the shell number is 1, we have 2n squared, so 2 times 1 squared, which gives us 2. 2 times 2 squared gives us 8, 2 times 3 squared, 18, and so on. The electron configuration is the arrangement of electrons in those electron shells. The electron shells fill from the first shell around that nucleus, and then they fill outwards. The, the electron shell on the outside is called the valence shell and the electrons within that valence shell are called valence electrons. Here's an example. So it's a very simple example because we're looking at hydrogen which we know is element number one and so therefore there's only one, one electron that has to therefore be in the first shell. Here's our second example. So now we're looking at nitrogen. Now nitrogen has seven electrons. In the first shell, we could only fit two. So the next five have to fit into the second shell. And so we have an electron configuration of two five. Our third example here is for potassium. Potassium is element number 19. Now we see that we have two eight eight one. Yet on the table prior, we said that we would fit, and I'll just flick backwards to it. We said that we could fit um, two electrons in the first shell, 8 and then 18. But I just showed you potassium with 2881. Okay, the reason for this is where we go in a minute when we look at instead of just shells, but also some subshells. So we have an electron configuration here of 2881. Here we go about the subshells. So the main shell is now made up of subshells. And in those subshells, depending on which ones they are, we can fit a certain number of electrons as well. So if we have a look here, the K shell only could contain two electrons, and so they just fit into one subshell. Our L shell could fit eight electrons. So two of those fit into an S subshell, and then six into our P, which gives us a total of eight. Our M shell, which is our third shell, could fit 18 electrons. What we actually see is that two go into this S subshell, six go into our P, and then 10 go into a D subshell. Hence, we get the 18. And that is repeated for shell number four with S, P, D, and F. So our F subshell can contain 14 electrons. Electrons will fill the subshells in an order of increasing energy. And the order is given here. 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p and 5s. Now that just sounds really quite difficult to remember. You might notice in textbooks or on some um, websites that they might show you a pattern for remembering that. This year though we're going to use this process here. So if you have a look, this is very similar to the periodic table. Well, it is the periodic table, but it's been divided up into some groups. So here we have the S, the D in yellow, the P in green, but we also have a little 1S sitting up the top here. And then we have our F group down the bottom. What we'll do is I'll show you how to get these electron configurations. And so I have to flick backwards to the, the, um, the slide prior. So here we're looking at carbon. Now carbon has six electrons and as you can see it has a subshell notation of 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. That gives us our six if you add those three superscripts up. Let's have a look here. So just let me write. So we've got, if we look where carbon would be, so one, two, three, four, five. So carbon would be here on the periodic table. Now, if we have a look, we've got 1s there and another 1s there. So we can write that as 1s, but there's two of them. Now, if we have a look at the next, so we've gone across the top 
row. Now we have a look at this one here. So we've got two lots of 2s. So we've got 2s, but there were two of them. Now looking here, we've got two lots of 2p. So 2p and we've got two of them. That gives us our carbon. Now if I flick forwards, our next example here is chlorine. Chlorine is element number 17. If you once again add up each of these superscripts, you'll see that that adds up to 17. So let's flick back once more and find chlorine on here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So here will be chlorine. Now we'll follow the process we did before and I'll write the sub-shell notation down the bottom here. So once again, we've got one, two lots of 1s's. So we've got 1s2. Now we have a look here. We've got still our 2s's and there's two of them. So 2s and we've got two of them. Now if we count up our 2p's, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now we've got 2p, but there's 6 of them. Continuing on this pattern, now we're here. So we have 3s and there's 2 of them. Now we need to continue across. So we've done these. So we continue across the row and we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have 3p and there is 5 of them. So our chlorine is this one here. So if we flick forwards, you can see once again we have that subshell notation on this. So hopefully by me doing a couple of those examples, you, you followed through with that. We do have some exceptions to the rule. Our exceptions are chromium and copper. So element 24 and element 29. If you go back and I ask you to do that when you're viewing this video and have a look at where the exceptions are. So we'll see that our 4s doesn't appear to fill before we get to our 3Ds and the same thing happens with copper. The reason for this is that these particular electron configurations for chromium and copper are more stable than what they would be filling the other way. So I want you to take some time. You should be able to write the electron configuration using our subshell notation for the first 38 elements in the periodic table. Well, that's what's going to be expected in stage two chemistry. And so Mr. Vu and I are going to expect that this year as well. At this stage, we'd like you to write the electron configurations using subshell notation for lithium, oxygen, aluminium, potassium and titanium. So take some time to do that and then we'll come back to the, the video.